What's up you guys, how you doing? Well, I hope today we're gonna do a little q and I'm home, when have we been here you guys? When have we last been here? This week has been absolutely nutty. Um, I've been home all week, but it's just been so much catch up, so much like just administrative work and stuff on my computer and prepping for the upcoming weeks. We're traveling again twice, so get excited for that. So last night, First of all, let me just tell you how my sleep schedule right now is so screwed up, it's not even funny. Like, I am awake all night, and then I'm tired during the day, so I pass out at like 8, 8, 8 p.m., and then I wake up at like midnight feeling alive and ready to thrive and thrust and organize drawers and do projects in my house, and then it's 4 a.m. and I'm going back to sleep, but no matter how late I go to sleep, I still wake up at 7.30. So it's a vicious cycle, but we're seeing our way through. In the middle of the night, I was like, why don't I do an insomnia Q&A um, and ask you guys if you wanna ask me any questions and I would answer them in the morning. So here we are, let's get going. You guys are mad nosy, so I already knew what all the questions are gonna be, but some of them are pretty good. Let's see, would you consider doing a cook with me video? Faves wanna see how Kelly gets down in the kitchen. So this makes me laugh because I feel like so many people assume that fat women especially can sing, especially a fat black woman can sing and can cook. I do neither. Um, I can really make a few dope dishes. I'm really good at breakfast um, and I'm good at like specific things, you know, like baked chicken and like sweet potatoes. Like I really cook healthy stuff because that's all I really ever learned how to cook. I, Carla on the other hand, Carla can burn, okay? She can cook her face off. So um, she was talking about soup recently and I kind of want to make soup. So maybe we'll do like a cozy day where we like make soup in a crock pot and just chill together. So, and I'll try like one of Carla's recipes, but um, cooking videos have never really occurred to me because it's not something that I'm passionate about. How can I be myself when my culture Persian is uh, judgmental? I think, you know, all of our cultures have moments where we are judgmental around certain things, whether it is a lifestyle, whether it's colorism, whether it is um, sort of classism, uh, classist, classism, that's not a thing, classist, uh, or if it's about, you know, your weight and how you look. I think that, you know, the key to really true happiness in life is to give as little Fs as humanly possible about others' perception of you. You have to live for you. You have to do what makes you happy and do what you know is right. Um, and the rest, screw them. I mean, I know it's easier said than done and it's a process, but every day, you know, take steps to kind of secure your own happiness, whether that's wearing a color you love or, you know, taking a class you've always wanted to take, all the things that are gonna fill you up. And it, that, I feel like that kind of constant reinforcing yourself builds up armor to other people's perception of you. And you just, suddenly it just rolls off like water and you're like, you know, and that doesn't mean that when people attack you or are mean or vicious that it won't sting or hurt, it will. It just lasts a lot less long. You know, it just, it, it won't wound you to the core versus feeling like you got scraped up, if that makes any sense. Tips on putting together outfits. Um, I think that, you know, when it comes to getting dressed, I used to really be, I didn't really know what to say about it because getting dressed for me is really innate. It's very much an impulse. It's very like how I feel. It's how I, my brain processes color and patterns and an idea or ideals of what I want to look like. So um, I really used to not know what to say, but I've answered this question so many times that I feel like I've gotten a little bit better at it. And I think getting dressed is number one, um, deciding what you wanna look like. And th that can be through inspiration. It can be through magazines, through your favorite influencers, through Pinterest boards, um, really identifying like what color, what kind of colors you like, what your style is. Are you classic? Are you kind of preppy? Do you like things a little bit more edgy? Do you like black? Do you like bright? You know, are you looking to, you know, be sort of, Parisian with a with a beret on and, and a beautiful peacoat or do you want a moto jacket you know so deciding that sort of thing 
and um, getting those like good key fundamentals in your wardrobe so that everything is kind of mix and matchable. Um, I think that's kind of step one. Step two is to try stuff on. Um, I always say, you know, putting it on is pulling it off or pulling it off is putting it on. And it's really about trying on things like today, Today is a good example. I got this jacket in the mail. Don't judge me. I didn't purchase it. It was a gift sent from someone. Um, and it's this like really pretty color, right? And uh, you know, I was just trying it on like, okay, that's cute, whatever. And I sat it on my bed and I happened to just sit it down next to my towel, which I was getting dressed. Uh, so my towel was laying there. And I was like, y'all, these colors look really good together. Is that a thing? So then I went in my closet to make sure that I had something in that color and I have a dress in that color. So really just kind of getting ideas is about like playing in your closet, play dress up, and then it gets easier and easier and easier as you start to define your style. Sorry if that was rambly, but that's what I have to say about that. This person said, um, my insomnia tends to come from being too hot and too cold than anyone else. My insomnia, I explained it at the beginning, it's just a, a vicious sleep cycle that I'm in. I've been in it before. I need to just force myself to stay up later so that I don't wake up in the middle of the night. Um, but that's an interesting point. When are you coming to London again? My hope is to come to London for Fashion Week. Um, a lot has changed over there with the brands that I've worked with in the past and the PR people that I know and people have moved around. So um, it wasn't such a natural fit this time. And I was also like really busy in New York this Fashion Week. But I hope Perhaps in February, that'll be something that I get to do. The next comment slash question is, you're always so positive and upbeat. What's your secret to happiness? I don't think that anyone is always positive or always upbeat. We, we all have our moments. We all have our moods. We all have our downtime. But, sorry, my earrings are large and they're like attacking me from like the shoulders and I just feel attacked. Okay, sorry, I feel better. Um, so this one is kind of an esoteric thing, um, but I do have some like literal things you can do. Um, so I am one naturally an upbeat and positive person. So it's part of my DNA. It's part of my personality. And I think that that is a big part of it. It's the, the stuff that's in you that you don't really control. Um, two, I'm, I'm a God person. So, you know, I believe in, um, I believe in, focusing on positive i believe in surrounding myself with joy filling myself with joy and i think that god works through me um in presenting joy to other people like me making other people happy makes me happy and so that has always been something that's in me that that's like that light from the lord that also i can't really explain <laughs> Um, but I just want to stress that I'm definitely not always happy um, and I get stressed out. I get really sort of anxious and my anxiety is usually always like not um, serious. And so then I stress myself out even th further. Like I get really anxious, like I'm really easily triggered by noises, sounds, um, environments. I'm really just sensitive. And so like, for example, when Jess and I were in Philly, we would get into an Uber and for some reason, I know like, I'm not crazy. I have never met a person in my personal life who gets in the car and puts the heat on 80. So you get into this hot box and you have all your winter clothes on and it's just small in there and I'm in the back seat, which is also like not my favorite and it's really hot and I just start to kind of panic. And I'm like, so I instantly just try to roll down the window and for some reason, every time I tried, all the windows were locked. So then you have to ask the driver like, hey, do you mind unlocking my window? Or hey, do you mind not turning the heat on 600? Like what the F is wrong with you? Also, guess what? It's not that cold outside. So see, I'm already getting riled up. So your girl's not always perfect, happy, positive. I've had big things happen in my life that are gargantuan, um, that cause severe like trauma and sadness. And I saw my way through them and I still feel like myself. So I feel like um, short of having like something chemically wrong, something, you know, like a mental health issue, like a true issue. If it's just about, you know, being in a funk or in a mood, I think choosing happiness is, the way to go like you have to say 
I choose happiness, you know? I, I choose not to be sank. I choose not to be in a foul mood. I choose not to have an attitude with everyone I interact with. I want people to leave me feeling good, you know? So, rambly again, but th th those are my thoughts. Next question. Would you ever come out with your own clothing line? Your style is amazing. Thank you very much. Um, I see, like, people think that uh, someone liking style is the equivalent of, oh, well, come up with a clothing line. Clothing lines are a business, and it's not really a business that I want to be in. I would love, 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 put it out into the universe. I would love to do a capsule collection. So that means do a collection with a brand that already exists, and then I design a few pieces. Uh, that's kind of a goal for, you know, the coming world time whatever but my own business in that way no i like this someone said list three things that you're grateful for right now um i'm grateful for my health i'm grateful for my my peace of mind those sound super general but you don't understand like I see people dealing with things that I've dealt with and they're they're not okay. And I am so thankful for my peace of mind. Um, I'm thankful for my family. You know, we're really close. They're my biggest cheerleaders. They're my supporters. I'm thankful for my friends who just support and love me and just surround me with good vibes. Um, and I'm extremely thankful for you guys. It sounds, I mean, we all say it and it sounds cliche, but you know, none of this is possible without you. So we can create beautiful content and take photos and make the best videos in the world. But if no one watches it and no one ever comments or likes or says anything, you're just yelling into the void versus being able to really build community and build, um, you know, friendships with people all around the world. Like I recognize so many of your names, especially those who comment on every video. And I feel like we have like a fun rapport together. Some of you are so incredibly sweet and just always rooting for me, um, always happy for me. And so I'm very thankful for you as well. I mean, I could go on and on because your girl gratitude, I have a lot of flaws, but gratitude, she's good at gratitude. <laughs> She's good at gratitude. Any brunch meetups with followers in the future? Um, I haven't done a meetup in actually forever. It's a long overdue. Um, I, and generally like I get a lot of comments like, oh my God, you're in my city. I'm so mad I missed you. And in my thoughts, I'm like, but I don't know you. Like how would I, <laughs> how would we have planned that? And I'm like, oh duh, they mean a meetup. Yeah. So I definitely want to do a meetup at the top of the year. So keep your eyes out for that. It would definitely be New York and or Philly based. Um, if y'all want me to go on like a Kelly tour, like let your favorite brands know that you want to see me and maybe we can make that happen. But yeah, I, um, I, I'm, I'm down. I'm down. So this is probably my favorite question that I think I've ever got, <laughs> um, like ever. And it says, what was your style like as a teenager? Girl. First of all, I have always, always loved clothes, fashion um, for a long time. I would say, especially like middle school um, into high school, I felt like I couldn't be a part of it. Even though I wasn't like the biggest kid, I was always a big kid. And then I was like the biggest kid, like I'm tall, I'm bigger. Um, and so when I was a teenager, I was super into like grunge, like I was into all the flannels, all of the like 90s moments. I was into like more like 90s rock star vibes than like 90s hip hop vibes, but it was a combination. So I did everything from like the baggy jeans to tight skinny jeans with flannel shirts. I was obsessed with Chuck Taylors. I had like so many pairs of Chucks. I had all these like really thick platform, like those Steve Madden-esque shoes. My mom used to call them He-Man shoes. She'd be like, girl, what are you doing? You look crazy. Why? You look like you're, you're in your father's clothes. But I really did. I was such a tomboy. I hated pink. What? <laughs> I hated pink. I hated like anything girly. I was just super like grunge, even like, I just wanted to look like either Kurt Cobain or Biggie. Like I was both those people and I probably still am a little bit. 
Next up is what is your favorite family Christmas tradition? So before my mom passed away, my favorite Christmas tradition was, cause I haven't lived at home since age 17, um, would be going home. Me and my mom were the Christmas kids. My sister and my dad, they're like, eh, don't care. Like they like it, but they didn't like love obsess. So I loved going home, my mom pulling out the tree, us decorating the house, making cookies, like her blasting music in the kitchen, hanging up our stockings. Um, my mom was the queen of like stocking stuffers and just would always go up above above and beyond i mean she did in every aspect of life but christmas she would turn it out and so that was always really really fun for me and since you know she's in heaven now um my family has created new traditions and now we travel so it's taking something that we really love my sister and i are passionate about travel as you know and taking like a sad time or feeling or spirit and you know transplanting ourselves putting ourselves on a beach like now i can't even imagine christmas not in a bathing suit with my family like in our like poolside rooms and like sipping on drinks and stuff so um both ways have been really incredible and and such a blessing i knew that you nosy people would ask me this literally 75 of the questions are are you dating you know what's up with your romantic life? I'm gonna say this. Um, we share so much online and everything that I want to tell you, I have told you. And what I don't want to tell you, I have not told you. I used to put that side of my life out there and now I don't. And I feel like that's all I have to say about that. I don't. And I don't really think I will. And I don't plan on it, probably ever. This is a good one. What's the hardest issue you've dealt with when you first started YouTube? Um, so from a business perspective, I feel like when I started YouTube, I had expectations that were um, unrealistic. And now I know that. So I've been a blogger since like 2012. And I've been online and have gotten a ton of press and like people in the fashion industry know who I am. And I had this expectation that when I started YouTube that everyone who consumed the content that I created in other places would just automatically subscribe. And that was not the case. I tell like creators when they're like deciding if they want to add a YouTube or, um, you know, I tell people when they're like saying, oh, I love your two YouTube, I think I wanna start one. The first thing to know is like, you guys are completely different people than those that have been following my IG for years and all that. It's just different audiences. And so you have to treat different people um, differently. Like you guys want different stuff. So that was hard for me to kind of grasp. And it took me a second to hit my stride and figure out like, what kind of content I want to create. I didn't make hauls for like the first year of me being on YouTube and my channel did not grow. Um, fat women want hauls, the end. I think we want to, and I think it's just a bigger comment on society, you know, uh, how, you know, the models that brands are providing, um, you know, their, their customers uh, because they provide those models because otherwise you won't buy it. But then being able to see yourself being able to see me try something like, oh, I'm tall like Kelly, or I carry weight in the middle like Kelly, or I have big arms like Kelly, uh, whatever the case may be, and you wanna see me try it on, you know, that is part of it, right? Um, so that, from a business perspective, just the point of that rambling, good grief. The point of all that is you're different and you need different things. And so I had to learn that. Um, I think emotionally, or like what was hard, is and or could be hard for um, many people is you really have to have a thick skin people come at you so sideways um and i think that it's really awesome like how we build community how we we share with each other and we're we're um we're friends you know online and stuff like that but there is the reality of that like i don't really know you all the way you know you don't know me so sometimes when people are over familiar with me and say something like that they might you know sideways say to their like bestie and their bestie loves them so the bestie can take it sometimes when i get comments like that i'm like who are you talking to <laughs> you know what i mean like i don't like that like i don't like it but i just have to remind myself that people really do feel like they know you. Um, and so people can kind of come out of their mouths a little crazy and not really mean any harm. Um, and then I know as my channel grows, um, 
we often talk about representation, right? We talk about representation and visibility and needing to be seen and to be, um, you know, heard. But at the end of the day, representation and visibility also brings with it violence, right? So if you are black or fat or whatever, some version of a human that is not this one version of what beauty is, which is, you know, white, thin, blonde, etc., you are susceptible to people thinking that they can say anything they want to you. They can tell you, you know, I had a girl left a comment and sorry if you're watching this, but she's like, you're so pretty, but oh my God, don't take this the wrong way. But have you tried Weight Watchers or whatever? And I'm like, you don't know my life. Like, you don't know my life. You don't know what I'm doing. You don't know how I got here. You don't know what I'm doing to change it or not change it. You don't know what triggers me. You don't know if I have an eating disorder. You don't know, right? So people can, and that's like a mild version versus like, you know, you're disgusting. You're going to die. I hate you. I hate fat people. I hope you die. I want to kill you. I mean, people are nuts. So that is another side that you really have to be prepared for. But what kind of gets me through moments like that is like, I always say, look at some of our favorite people, whether you love to hate them, look at the Kardashians, you know, Kim Kardashian, you can love to hate her, look at Beyonce, you can love her or hate her, whatever your feeling is on those people. If you look at their comments, they can be nuts, like violent, all this stuff people said about Blue Ivy and talking about her hair and just all this ridiculous, talking about your, your child in that way has to be so, so hurtful. But guess what? They're laughing their way all the way to the bank. They are thriving, living their very best lives. And you know, you have to be able to take all that stuff with a grain of salt. So you really do have to have a thick skin. And I'm not saying that that's right, but it's just, it's a function of what's necessary to do this job. The last one, we're gonna end this on a high note. <laughs> um, not assuming you got hair, but if you do, what's your favorite way to um, remove body, face hair, PS your something. I can't even see the rest of it, it's cut off. Um, so I am not a very hairy person. Like my arms are just like not hairy. My legs are not that hairy. Um, I just don't have a lot of body hair naturally, which also sucks because I don't have like luxurious eyebrows as you guys well know. Um, I think that body hair removal is personal choice. I don't think that it's mandatory. I think if you want hair under your arms, rock it. It's there for a reason, TBH, you know, it's there to defend those very important glands against toxins. Um, so I'm not always the biggest armpit shaver. <laughs> like I'm going to Carla, don't you worry. My sister's like, you better shave for Christmas because she hates when I like wear a bathing suit and have farm hair. That's her thing. Um, but uh, so I just a general razor and um, I, there's a couple that I like. I don't remember them right now. And I really instead of like using soap or whatever, there's like shaving oil, which I really like. It's quite nice. Um, I've also done like for the bikini area, I've done waxing quite a bit. Um, painful but effective and I I hope I think I kind of want to try laser hair um, you know once you get into your 30s honey that chin lights up a little bit she does <laughs>